Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. We are starting with James Hollinshead, who just posted a physique update, and as you can see, he is really lean. At 7 weeks out, he is really shredded, I think he is a little bit ahead of time. I wasn't expecting this kind of conditioning for 7 weeks out, especially compared to what James usually brings to the stage. This is usual 2-3 weeks out for James. And also the other guys that are doing the Iron Classic, not many of them are in this kind of conditioning. Most of them are quite a bit softer than this, but in 7 weeks time they will be ready. I don't know what James has in mind, but right now at 7 weeks out he is shredded. And I gotta say he looks better than most of his physique updates so far. And I think he spoke on a podcast when this photo was taken, it was after a refeed. So he's looking fuller, harder, but you know, his body fat percent is pretty low, so he looks good, yeah. Now, you guys know that he is being coached by Milos Sharchev, at least officially. As you can see in this post and most of his physique updates, he is not tagging Milos Sharchev, not on the photo, not in the caption. He is not really mentioning anything about him working with Milos. But Milos is still sharing James' photos. What is the deal? What is going on? Are these guys even working together still? Well, James actually made a comment on this on Fuad's podcast. So let me show you what he had to say about this. Who are you working with right now? Well, Milos is still looking at my stuff. But I'm kind of, I said to Milos, I said, no, I'm going to make some calls. I'm going to tell you what I think. And then you tell me if it's like stupid or not. So you guys so, are kind of working together in a way. Yeah, like I sent him my pictures today, yeah. uh, this morning, and he has a look, and then he's like, I want to ask, and then he asks me some questions off the back of it, and right. blah, 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 because I'm really hard to coach, man. I'm not going to lie, I'm really hard to coach. I can tell. So, yeah, so I have to, I've got so many instinct feelings that I put them forward, regardless if I should or not, can I ask and then you, I work from there. Can I ask you a question, James? Yeah. Why can't you turn it off? Um, because like, I feel like I've bodybuilt long enough to know more than some people. I've bodybuilt long enough to know more than some people, is what James is saying. So yeah, I kind of expected something like this to happen. I already spoke about this in one of my previous videos. Because James, his approach so far was so much different than what Milos' approach is. He definitely isn't the type to do the insulin protocols and giant sets workouts. James already spoke about this as well and he said that they weren't really doing any insulin protocols. And as far as his training, you know how he's training, nothing like what Milos would suggest. And why am I showing you this photo? It's because when I saw this photo, it's when I made that video, I felt like James doesn't look like he's at his best. Like he actually made progress in that whole year off that he took. And I thought maybe he's gonna blame Milos for looking like this and he's gonna stop working with him because I also know that James is really hard to coach. He had quite a few coaches so far, but he definitely made the most progress with Patrick Tour. However, these guys fell apart after that Mr. Olympia where James didn't really bring his best look. It was pretty bad, I gotta be honest. And they stopped working together and this is a pose that James made couple of months, actually more than a couple of months after that Mr. Olympia and here he kind of talks about why he stopped working with Patrick and how this shouldn't have happened this way and he says basically to sum it all up, he says it was due to Patrick having hard time making such assessments from the images I was sending him. What a weird reason to stop working with a coach. Basically all the top coaches in the world are working online, they're assessing the photos that the clients send them, that's how it's done, but, but this actually turned out not to be a BS reason, because after Patrick, James worked with uh, Jordan Peters. And these guys are actually living in a close proximity, they were actually seeing each other pretty regularly, training in the same gym, so yeah, I mean, that wasn't really your average coach-client relationship, these guys are friends, and Jordan was just, you know, helping James make the decisions. So the last time James competed, it was with help of Jordan, and James, I think he looked his absolute biggest... But I don't think they really nailed his peak, like he was never super dry, super hard. He did look big and he was pretty lean, but, but he probably could have came in drier, maybe even fuller. If he had an experienced coach who he actually trusts, 
Maybe this could have been done. Now he's working with Milos, but like you heard, they are sort of working together. How is this gonna work out? I'm really curious because I know Milos is kind of like my way or the highway, but I know he needs to adjust himself when he works with his top pros because they are all very experienced, so they know what works best for them. So sometimes these coaches need to make compromises, but this seems like... I don't know, a little bit too much, because based on what I heard from James on that podcast, he's basically telling Milos when he's gonna have a refeed, uh, when he needs to pull hard, when he needs to push hard, so I don't know, it's like Milos is kind of checking out what he's doing, but he's not really making final decisions, and maybe James is just holding him there to help him with the peak at the end, but he wants to get in shape the way he likes to, it's, it's definitely very, very curious, very interesting, whatever you guys think, I'm really curious to hear what you think, but here is James right now, it's seven weeks out, he looks really lean, he doesn't need to get much more shredded, a little bit more and try to maintain fullness, maybe work on his hardness and eventually peak right. And really, anything is possible at the Arnold Classic, this guy has a lot of muscle, right now I believe he's like 275, something like that, with this conditioning, that's good, that's good, and he has 7 more weeks to harden up, and with this kind of relationship, client-coach relationship with Milos Archev, yeah, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see what happens at the end, I'm really curious, but we'll see, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Like I said, most of the guys doing the Arnold Classic, like Rafael Brandau right here, are not on the same level of conditioning like James Hollins said, nor they should be, if you ask me. So Rafael Brandau at 7 weeks out, this is what his conditioning looks like. He's being coached by Neil Hill, and there is one thing I definitely notice in most of his physique update photos and videos, is that he's bigger, he's definitely bigger. Like I said, the conditioning is nowhere near the conditioning of James Hollings yet, but it shouldn't be that lean for 7 weeks out. He has enough time to get shredded, and I think he will do that. But the more important thing for Rafael, his conditioning was never the issue, it was always good. The more important thing is how much did he actually grow? How much did he actually progress? It's gonna be really hard to tell until the end, until he actually steps on the stage, but I think the progress is quite visible. I think he made more progress than James did in the last offseason. But, you know, James already has probably enough mass, he doesn't need to get any bigger. Rafael needed to get bigger. James actually beat Rafael, I believe, twice so far, but at the last show they did, it was Mr. Olympia, Rafael beat James by placing 10th at that Mr. Olympia, but personally the reason why he actually placed 10th and James placed, I believe, 16th at that Mr. Olympia was because Rafael was in good conditioning. And you don't really miss conditioning when you're working with Chris Asito, so I don't know if Rafael is gonna bring the same kind of conditioning to the Arnold Classic, because he is no longer coached by Chris Asito, now he's coached by Neil Hill, who is definitely a better option for growing in the offseason, but as far as bringing conditioning, I think like Chris Asito is the guy that pushes guys the most. Everybody who is coached by Chris Asito usually is very conditioned. So was Rafa at this show at Mr. Olympia. And I think that was the bigger part of the reason why he placed so high, 10th. And James at that Mr. Olympia was really soft. So of course he wouldn't beat Rafael, but if both of these guys bring the same conditioning, well, at least with the size that they had back then, I think James beats Rafael, but, however, it seems Rafael brought up his level of muscularity, I think he is bigger now, a lot bigger. Like I said, there is still a lot of work to do, he needs to get conditioned, and once he is shredded, how much of this fullness will stay? How much of this is real muscle, actual tissue? Personally, I believe he's gonna get even bigger, even better. Uh, until the Arnold Classic, because it seemed like he was bigger in his actual off-season, and I think he had like a cruise face, maintaining face, uh, after that uh, off-season push, so now he is back on the gear, he's working on conditioning, so he is getting leaner at the same time, and he's bringing back the fullness and the hardness, so I think as this prep goes along, he's gonna just get leaner and more impressive, 
And yeah, I think this guy is probably one of the favorites, you know. I think he's gonna probably place in that top five along with uh, Harry Chopin, Samson Dauda, Andrew Jack, and Rubiel Mosquera. I think Rafael Brandau is probably the guy that's gonna round up that top five. But again, it all depends on what kind of conditioning he brings. Will he be able to bring the same level of conditioning uh, like he was able to bring when he was working with Aceto? We'll see. It's definitely going to be a very exciting, very interesting Arnold Classic. All right, next we got a physique update of Blessing Aloribu deep into his offseason. And it's been a while since we saw anything from Blessing and uh, here is the reason. So he says he's 292 cold, which probably means in the morning, fasted. He says, I feel like the body is well rested and fully recovered and ready for that push. Feeling really fresh, that's pretty much the end of recovery. Now we got the whole year to improve on everything, especially legs. So it's gonna be a fun one. And yeah, I believe it's gonna be very fun if this is him right now off the gear. As he says, he's at the end of his recovery phase. He's fresh, his body is ready for the push. So this is him without pushing anything. And he's 292, and as you can see, the conditioning is actually looking pretty good, right? Like, when I first saw this, this photo, this physique update, I thought, wow, like, he is maybe bigger, he's, yeah, sure, he's bigger, but his legs are still looking the same, the proportions are looking the same, and his legs is exactly what is holding him back from doing better at these shows. But you can't expect the guy to make improvements if he is off of everything. I mean, if he is actually off, he actually uh, stayed really big, 292 for these conditions, this is actually really good. And like I said, the body fat percent is very good. It's pretty low. Again, he is full. He is huge. And he is ready to start the push. And this is his starting point. Probably the softest loop that we've seen from Blessing in a while. But still, it is very, very good. I have no idea for how long he's been off. But it doesn't matter, he's about to start the push right now, hopefully the accent will actually be on his legs. And when I say the accent, I don't really mean him training his legs three times a week or something like that. Although he could probably get away with that, because his upper body is like good enough, you know, he doesn't need much work to do with the upper body, he really needs legs. He could probably get away with, you know, training his upper body very, very little and training his legs actually three times a week. But I think more importantly, he needs to start training legs properly, you know, with proper depth to his squat movements, to his leg pressing movements. That's the bigger issue, if you ask me, like, the way he trains his legs is definitely not ideal. I know he has some sort of knee issues, so if that's the case, then that's what he needs to fix. He needs to take care of his knees. So I don't think it's the problem of volume, I think it's the problem of execution. So if he actually is able to squat really deep, to go really heavy or really intense, and to do that regularly, week after week, maybe train legs twice a week, have a hamstring day and a quad day, then, you know, maybe he can improve those legs. And if he does that with his upper body, he might actually be more than just a hype. But so far, that's all he has been. Just hype, unfortunately. A lot. A lot of hype. But whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding content like this, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.